Hey guys, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. So it's time to grade the Bass Cat Puma STS. So this is the new Bass Cat. We've done, I think, three videos on it. That's the wider body Bass Cat. It came out last year at the dealer meeting and they really just have been getting delivered in about the last six or seven months. So they announced them, didn't have any built, had tarp, started taking orders and started delivering those boats. So um, there's not a ton of them out there. The boat we look at here was one of the first 50 or 60 off the, uh, off the line. Uh, but he's really not had any significant issues with the boat uh, other than a little bit with the latches, which has been corrected We talked about that in the video. So we're going to do this video just like we did all the rest of them You're going to notice I'm going to re reference several pieces of that I have in front of me because it's been a long time since I started these reviews So we did our first review Boy uh, 18 months ago, I guess probably right about so I had to kind of go back and watch those videos and remind myself Why I graded boats high and why I graded boats low and uh, Kind of the scale of what I was doing that on uh, So we're gonna do that today again um, And I'm also gonna mention so I, I talked about this in the first video I have a bias and I thought I didn't have biases when I originally did the videos, but in hindsight I did because I had a bias against Ranger. If you remember, I had been in a number of Rangers and I had personally felt uh, the level of not just customer service, but also quality control had deteriorated over the last several years. Uh, and it seemed to be highly correlated to uh, the ownership of White River Group uh, owning that, that business. I don't know if that's what caused it or not, but certainly I saw um, less of a boat, if you will, less of a quality, uh, less of a quality of the components of my boats over the course of the three or four Rangers that I own, ending in the last one that I own. And I've now been in a Bass Cat for a year, so um, I have some bias towards Bass Cat, and that could be good or bad, but it's good because I've had a very good experience owning this boat, which I didn't have with my Ranger, with my last Ranger, with several of them I did. So we're going to score this exactly like we did before. We're going to have five categories, 0 to 9 is less than average, 10 to 12 is average, 13, 16 good, 17, 18 excellent, 19, 20 blew my socks off. Only one boat in one category scored uh, a 19 or a 20 in the prior one. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, overall scoring, uh, we really didn't have anybody score that low on that first test. Uh, so let's just consider 6180 good, 8190 excellent, anything above that just doesn't seem likely to happen because nobody does everything perfectly. I thought it'd be a nice um, sort of reset to look at what we reviewed before and how all those boats scored. So uh, these are the boats we looked at, um, the boats that we scored. We did not score the Vexus boat. Uh, and the Allison's not on here as well because I ran out of space and the Allison was never really in one of the boats I was going to look at, but those reviews are up as well. So reading across the page here, you see we scored um, all those boats in fishability. Uh, actually, let's just jump right to that one right there. So there's, there's the total scoring of these, uh, of these boats. And down fishability, you see the highest scoring were uh, the two Rangers, uh, the Camus and the Skeeter FXR 21. Sorry, I had to kind of refer back to some of my material from before. So again, fishability, the top scoring boats, we talked about that. Uh, and then in the fit and finish space, uh, and by the way, interestingly, the Lynx was not at the top of that list. Uh, the big step was part of it. Uh, the co-angular area where the rods didn't fit, that was part of it, that's been fixed. Uh, and then, um, and then the oddity of the box layout. It was something I wasn't used to, so I dinged them a little bit on that. It still scored well. Uh, in fit and finish, you see that uh, the top scoring boats were uh, the Puma, the Camus, uh, the Phoenix 921, and the, uh, the two Phoenix boats. Um, and again, uh, fit and finish, uh, the Lynx got dinged because there were carpet in the boxes. That's not changed. Uh, I really wanted a, uh, a divided live well. That's not changed but C-Deck has changed. So you can get C-Deck in the Lynx now. Uh, and, and by the way, I'm saying all this to also say, a lot of these manufacturers we look, we're gonna look at here, they have had significant changes. And I don't know whether it's because of what we did or they're just paying more attention to what competitors are doing, but everybody has upgraded their, everybody has upped their game, if you will. Most of them have trailer brakes now. C-Deck's pretty common. I, I think maybe some of that had to do with some of our review and some of the feedback you guys gave. And of course, some of it also is them just paying attention 
uh, at the boat shows every year to see what everybody else is doing. So um, I'd love to take credit for some of that. I probably shouldn't. I may anyway. But um, so the uh, the Bascat Lynx did not score best fit and finish. Now in performance, uh, the two best scoring boats. If you remember the bullet, I said kind of blew my socks off. We scored a 19 on that boat, and the Lynx scored an 18, which was really, really, really good. Uh, and then in amenities. Uh, the highest scoring boat, interestingly, was only a 17. That was with the Skeeter FXR. It really had kind of everything that I wanted to see pretty much in a boat, other than just a couple of things some other boats had. So that was the best score there. And then the trailers and other stuff, we had uh, one, two, three boats score 17. Uh, the two Bascat boats and the Ranger uh, Z521 C boat. Um, so we had a couple of boats there score really well, um, and I still think, well, I'll say it this way, after having had a Bass Cat boat for a year, it is such a superior trailer and other stuff, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, than any boat I've ever owned before. The way it rides, the quietness of the trailer, the way it trailers, the way it pulls behind the boat, I've been really, really impressed with that boat. Uh, and then, of course, we all know... Um, the top scoring boat was the Bass Cat Lynx, which was the boat I decided to pick. And I don't know that I talked about this a whole lot when I made that decision, but um, I really had narrowed it down to sort of two boats, three boats, excuse me. Uh, and that was the, uh, I like the Blazer 650 a lot, even though it didn't have a real high score. They made a bunch of changes right after that review uh, that would have bumped their score probably two or three points. Uh, and then uh, the Phoenix. Those would have been one of the Phoenixes. That would have been my top boats. So the Puma, um, fishability, uh, easy, easy buttons to get to for the trim. I love them over there. Uh, they're easy in, and, and you guys know what I like, right? I want to be able to adjust them with my foot. Super clean front deck. I love that little spot now they have for the, uh, for the power pole controls. Uh, very wide front deck, 68 inches at the, at the, at the seat holes and then super wide all the way to the front, almost like a crappie boat at the front. And you guys saw Mark and I both fishing side by side on the front deck up there. So really, really impressed with that. Um, sorry, my page just jumped on me. Uh, uh, the, it's what I just said, the deck carries way forward. A really good boat stability from the tippy test. Good gunnel height, not too high, not too low. So, you know, the limbs don't rake your rods out, but they're also, uh, not not so low that your rods get raked out and not so high that it's hard to flip out of uh, And then you can move forward and back for those few bass cat guys that want to be right on the tip of the boat You can move that foot control way way forward um, The only negative I saw in fishability here uh, Was that uh, I still think that front bow area can be improved somehow and I can't figure out how but You know, it's twice a day Right? You get in and out of the boat, usually get in once and get out once. But it is difficult to enter the boat from the trailer, from, from the front of the trailer. So if, you are, if you're loading or unloading the boat by yourself, those graphs are dead in your way to get in and out of the boat or to pick up your co-angler as he parks you to get in and out of the boat. Uh, that's really my only negative. It goes under fishability just the way I scored these things. Uh, so that boat scores a 17 there which is a, a point better than the Lynx scored. I, and I'm just doing this because I was curious looking back. So you don't have the big front step to the front deck. Uh, and they also increased the size of the holes where the butts for your co-angler's rods go. So I bumped them a point. I moved them to 17. It went from good in the Lynx to excellent in the Puma. Uh, so there you go. Now in fit and finish, it, it reads pretty much like the Lynx did, best in, and, and the original Puma that we reviewed, right? So, uh, best in class, carpet and glass. They continue to upgrade the carpet in these boats. Padded front deck. The boat has a tremendously solid feel running. Uh, it has some of my favorite seats. I talked about that. There were really three or four seats that I really liked in all these reviews I did. There's plenty of leg room. That big center glide well so we don't get the sloshing in the rough water, and it's very deep. It has an oxygenator and the spray uh, bars in there. If you remember, uh, Bass Cat was the only, so we talked to five or six, 
I want to say it was six fiberglass shops when we originally did the review. We asked them what was best boat, uh, what they thought was the best built boat, one, two, and three. And the only boat that every shop mentioned was Bass Cat. And Bass Cat was mentioned as the number one boat more than anybody else. So great fiberglass shop, be, uh, fiberglass shop feedback. The badging is above the waterline. Remember the Vexus, uh, I think the Blazer, uh, a bunch of those boats. They put that badging, their brand or their logo, raised logo below the waterline. And they're going to get scraped off. Phoenix really bad about this, getting scraped off in timber. Uh, two big ice chests. I kind of, I've kind of figured I'm actually using the wrong one in my links based upon uh, depth, uh, or excuse me, uh, where you want your weight in your boat. And then that proprietary dry latch system that Bascat has created. Uh, so some really good positives there. Negatives, I do prefer two live wells versus one. Uh, there is carpet in several of the bow boxes. Uh, I know they can't fix that because of the way they fix it, but I personally don't like carpet in the box. So I dinged them there. Um, and then, you know, and I'll also say on fit and finish and box layout, this is a much more traditional box layout than what the Lynx was, which I dinged the Lynx for um, because the Lynx scored on fit and finish 16. Um, some guys don't like the way this Puma is set up on the very front of the boat because they put that that little lift is where your net storage goes as opposed to the links it goes on the starboard side and that gives you two small day boxes to the front I don't use any box in any boat I've ever owned that's right on the front of the boat the front box on my Bascat Puma the links has the brain in it for my electronics and spare life jackets, spare pair of shoes, gloves, and a hat. That's all that's ever in there. I'm never in and out of it. When I go to a day box, I go to the back because I'm usually sitting down. If it's just for a piece of soft plastic, it's usually on the front deck in one of my little six cents boxes or bags. So that doesn't bother me at all, but I have heard some feedback from guys who do not like that dual little day boxes in the front. I'm not gonna use them anyway, so that doesn't bother me at all. Um, and then I also ding them. You guys know I don't like electronic dash pads. Now, I'm going to put two caveats on that. So I've now had this boat for 15 or 16 months. I've not had a failure on one of those. I never went that long in one of my Rangers without their dash pad failing. They always warranted them, which is great, but still you're a day on the water without your live wells or something or your lights or something because that dash pad's going out. I will also add the caveat, I haven't fished near as much out of this boat as I have some of my other boats. That boat has less than 100 hours on the motor, the, the Lynx, and I certainly have not fished in as foul a weather as I did in the prior boats. So I still don't like dash pads, but I've had zero failures out of the dash pads in my, uh, in my bass cat boat. So by the way, uh, so that score of Bear with me for a second. 17 excellent is a little better than the Lynx was. It was 16. Um, and we, we dinged the Lynx because of the divided live well same. There was no sea deck available. There is now. So that picked up a little bit there. And they both have carp in the boxes, which I don't love. So um, we get a little bit better score because we picked up sea deck here in uh, fit and finish. We then move on to uh, performance, and uh, it's the first boat. There's been nothing in that negative column. So it's got great lift. It's a dry ride. It's a, a really good big water boat. You know, it's a 20-foot, 7-inch boat. Would I like for it to be 21-7? Absolutely. I'd love to have a little bit bigger boat uh, because you can't substitute anything else for length. But for the length boat it is, it is a really good big water boat. Great nose control. You guys saw we ran that boat under 20 miles an hour and maintained a non-porpoising nose, which tells me, and we, we ran around some pretty good water, that you can really control the nose of this boat. Uh, had a great a hole shot. You saw him even, we put it on the pad with it uh, trimmed halfway up. Boat lands soft, really easy to drive. I already talked about it, planes at less than 20 miles an hour. Uh, it, they say it's faster than the Lynx. Now, I either have a really fast, I think maybe I have a really fast Lynx because my boat is a mid to high 70 mile an hour tournament loaded boat. 
And most guys say their lynxes are 73, 74 mile an hour boats. I'm in the winter time, I'm running over 76 tournament loaded. So maybe I just got a really fast lynx, a really fast mercury, which does happen sometimes. Maybe I've got a super set of props. I run a 23 pitch in the summer, a 24 pitch in the winter, three blade furies. But this boat is supposed to be faster. I didn't see that in this boat, but we really didn't wind it up for a long stretch. I think this boat's an 80 mile an hour boat, but with a 300 on it. So I think this boat's pretty much about the same speed, even though Bascat and other guys have told me it's a little faster than the Lynx. I don't think it's faster than my Lynx, how about that? And then, you know, if you go back through all the reviews, a lot of boats under the negative, they had some side slop. And the Lynx probably had a little bit more than many of them did. They have really, really eliminated that in this boat. I said it in the review. If that's part of, if you've ridden in a bass cap before and that's part of the things you didn't like about it, you need to ride in this boat. Amenities. Um, so the boat scores, uh, it's got a driver's cleat. It'll hold a 12. I think it'll actually hold a 15 inch in dash, but I didn't confirm that. Net storage, multiple options for rod straps. Twin fuel tanks, I love that. Uh, it's got, still the Basscat has the best tie down system and weight distribution for batteries in the back. Great sump access, you can take those box lids off so you can work on it from the back of the boat, from in the boat, if the boat's in your boat stall, there's, you can get into your sump really, really easy. You can lay down, the boxes, lids are out of your way and really dig around down in there. Good dash visibility running down the lake. Uh, multiple places in this boat to store props and tools. I uh, already talked about that removable back deck lids. It's got that battery tender trolling motor connector up front so you can swap trolling motors fast. It's got a place in the back if you need to take a biological break to stand. Um, it's got uh, those internal lights all over the inside of the boat. Push a switch, you got a light on right there where you're sitting. Ventilated storage. Um, negatives, same as the Lynx actually, doesn't have a really good left hand grab, old crap handle for a co-angler other than that big rail outside the boat. And I still submit to you in rough water, you want to be able to hold yourself this way versus this way because you can hold yourself in the boat better this way. So I would love to see that. And I'll tell you guys, I said this to Rick Pierce, and I know a lot of you guys are going to freak out about this, but if he would give seat belts as an option in a bass boat, I'd take them. Um, the, and I've talked to a bunch of guys, I've talked to two game wardens, I've talked to multiple people about this. The vast majority of accidents where somebody drowns is not because they get upside down in their boat. Boats generally don't wind up upside down. They do sometimes. But I would rather be in a boat accident buckled in my boat and stay in the boat than be thrown from the boat. So. If he'll make me a seatbelt boat, I'll take it. And I don't want it to be mandated that I have to wear my seatbelt, please. You can ride a motorcycle with no helmet in Texas, but you gotta wear a seatbelt. Don't get me started. But I'd like to see a better oh crap handle for the passenger. The seats do not adjust up and back. Uh, and then one of the things, and I understand because that storage box in the middle moves. It's on a hinge, right? Because there's an ice chest under it. There is no, uh, USB charger in that box. So you either have your phone in the floor or under the, and I do like that little mount where you can put your phone. There's a little ram mount just under the dash where you can see your phone and it's out of the weather and you can move it further back. I like that, but personally, because of everything I do with, with GoPro batteries and with cameras, I would like to have a in-box charging station, if you will. I would even take it in one of the front boxes. Just give me a USB plug in one of the front boxes. So I dinged it there. So amenities on this boat, uh, I think score probably the same thing that the Lynx does. Let's look real quick. Actually, uh, so back to something I said earlier, you can now get a remote drain plug in a Basscat boat. This boat didn't have one, but that's something I really personally like. So the boat actually scores a point better uh, there uh, because of the improvements they made in this boat from a amenity standpoint. And then on trailers and other stuff, it's got a trailer step, uh, got a really good winch and jack on it, swing away tongue, vault hubs, really good looking fiberglass trailer. One of the things I've grown to love on this boat, on my boat, is 
The trailer has multiple steps. It is so easy to mount this boat from the side. Even when I had a bad hip, it was really easy. I've really, I've really come to appreciate the quality and the thoughts that went into building this trailer, not just from the steps from the front, but to get in the boat from the side. Great dealer access, especially in my part of the world. There's even the Boat Works guys now in, in Fort Worth, so there's a ton of Bass Cat dealers. We've got uh, Rockwall right here. So around me, I've got Rockwall to my east, I've got the Boat Works guys to my west, and then I've got uh, Ross down there uh, near where I am. There's a couple around Houston area. Uh, Ross down there around Rayburn. So tons of dealer access, good LED, backup lights, Torflex flex ans uh, axles. I don't ding them. I talked about this with a bunch of the other manufacturers. I still would love to see more features, more build out on their website so you can look at stuff. What they have added now is a PDF with options, but I'll also tell you from looking at it, everything you can get on a basket boat's not included on that PDF. Now, I get it to some degree Every boat manufacturer is building boats right now that they sold three, four, five, six months ago. So maybe this isn't something they think that hard about, but uh, I would love to see, um, well, I, I, I've talked about it. Uh, the Ranger website, uh, the Vexus website, really, really good, robust websites where you can, you, you know, you're building the boats, what you're doing, but you can really see all the options available which maybe isn't that important if you're because you're going to go to a dealership and buy one anyway. But I can tell you, doing research like what I've had to do, it's a pain. It's harder to do. So, so uh, trailers and other stuff. Uh, the boat actually picked up one point, uh, and it picked up one point because the one thing I felt like this trailer was missing was trailer brakes. And again, Bass Caps added that now. So we went from a 17 to an 18, and uh, that's going to score this boat. Uh, by a long shot, the highest score. The prior highest score was 83, which was the Lynx. This boat scores 88. Now, having said that, almost every other boat I reviewed a year ago would score better now because they've all made some, I can't say that. A lot of them have made some improvements. I saw some of the improvements Charger make. I saw them at the, uh, at the um, uh, Classic. Uh, I saw some improvements Skeeter's made, I saw some improvements Phoenix made, Blazer's made improvements. I mean, I think all of these guys either listened to the reviews, listened to feedback from their fishermen, saw people buying other boats and realized they needed to up their game. So I think across the board you would see almost every boat we reviewed a year, year and a half ago move up one to four points. So it doesn't surprise me. I mean, frankly, had we reviewed this boat a year ago, no trailer bikes, no sea deck, there's two points it would have cost them because those things were very important to me. So the boat still would have scored really well, probably still would have been the best scoring boat, but there wouldn't have been the margin there is in this boat. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the contingency program has not changed. It's still extremely team friendly. Uh, I scored it a 17, which is real similar to what all the other boats scored. Um, so I'm, my next boat will be a Puma. I don't know how else to say it. Um, um, you know, boat prices, motor prices, electronics prices have all gone up. Uh, I'm trying to get my head around that a little bit, just like you are. But, um, I feel like I'm probably going to order a boat. You know, it's about a five or six month delivery time. I'd like to have a boat next spring. So when I order a boat, um, I won't be at a Puma STS. I'm really impressed with this boat. And uh, it, based on everything I've seen, it will be the last model boat I want to own unless they make it longer. I, you know, I've, I've ran, I ran 520 Rangers and 521 Rangers. I like the 520, but you can't substitute another foot of length. So um, until uh, the tournament circuits change and let you have bigger motors on them, at which point I would probably really look hard at a Jag. And by the way, I'm going to review a Jag here in a few weeks. You guys are going to enjoy. Um, but to run a 250 boat, I think this is 250 Merc uh, Pro XS. I think this is a boat for me. So again, yeah, I'm biased a little bit, but I could have been biased negatively if I'd had a bad experience with Bass Cat, and I've not. I've not. I've had a great experience with the boat, 
with every dealership I've dealt with, which have been several, with the folks at Fast Cat, Rick and his staff, they've all been great to me. And with the Fast Cat family, it's, I, it's been a long time since I've been around. If, if you pull up on a guy and he's in a Bass Cat, he wants to talk to you because he feels like your family. And I love that. That's a lot of fun to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I got more 10 boat reviews coming in the next couple days. I've got one done. I just haven't had a chance to edit it yet. And if you hadn't checked it out, I've got some golf videos I'm doing as well. Please check those out. Those are pretty fun as well. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, love the feedback. Always, you guys know I comment on all my feedback. If you need something, I'm at kinsmithfishingandoutlook.com. Glad to talk to you about that. And I got one more note to add. You know what? I'll add it in the comments. Uh, some people had asked me who the prop guy was. Mark mentioned, and I'll add that in the comments because I don't know that I can pull it up right now. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll talk to you all again. See you all again real soon.